Hey, what's up everybody? It's Flux with FluxWithIt.com and today we're going to do a quick overview video of the article that I've done on FluxWithIt.com. And this article is basically comparing the Ultranova from Novation with the Dave Smith Instruments Prophet 12. Two synthesizers that initially you might say are completely polar opposites, but actually share an awful lot in common. So the Prophet 12 is basically the flagship synthesizer from Dave Smith Instruments. You could argue that there's newer uh, synthesizers from Dave Smith Instruments, but nothing has surpassed the Prophet 12 when it comes to uh, polyphony, modulation, complexity of the oscillators. You know, I mean, this thing really is a very, very deep synthesizer. Alternatively, Novation's Ultranova, you could say is also the flagship of the Novation line, uh, there hasn't been a synthesizer from Novation since the Ultranova that's been as deep as the Ultranova is uh, with all of its wavetables and different filter types and everything. Uh, the excellent control scheme on it really hasn't been anything yet uh, that's taken advantage of anything more than that. So let's take a look at how these two synthesizers stack up in terms of workflow. So the first thing you'll notice about both of these synths is obviously I'm using the desktop module of the Prophet 12. The desktop module of the Prophet 12 is actually laid out fairly similar to how the Ultranova is. You have each individual section here outlined and you just simply press a button and you get right to that section. So if you want to edit an oscillator, you press the oscillator button and you're taken directly to the oscillator section. S same for if you want to jump to the filter or if you want to go to amplifiers, your feedback section, your delay section, your LFOs, your envelopes, or jump into modulations. On the Ultranova, you've got basically the same buttons on here. The oscillator section, mixer section, filter, voice settings, effects, modulation, LFO, envelope. The only real difference there is that, for instance, when I go into the oscillators on the Ultranova, I press the oscillator button and then I have an up-down selection to scroll between the three different oscillators. And then I have my eight soft knobs up in the screen here. Whereas on the Prof 12, you can select directly which oscillator you want between the four oscillators and then you have four soft knobs and four soft buttons and you can do your menu diving with those. Really there's no menu diving on the Prophet 12 deeper than two button presses which is pretty nice. For instance if I want to get to the envelope section of the amplifier I would press amplifier then VCA ADSR and now I have my ADSR right up top there. So that's pretty darn nice. Alternatively, if I want to get to the amplifier section on the Ultranova, I would just go ahead and press, I could either go to envelope, and then the first envelope is my amplifier envelope here. And I have eight knobs, so attack, decay, sustain, release, and then I have the amp velocity, amp repeats. Um, you know, the, this is for your envelope repeating, re-triggering, and then I can press next and I can see another page of options as well, such as attack slope, decay slope, so forth and so on. The Prophet 12, I have a amount area, and there I can get into my envelope repeating, the delay, the amount. Here I can go into the volume or distortion of the amplifier, the spread, which is kind of like your, your voice setting there as well. So they lay out pretty similarly. There's some minor differences there, but they actually work very similarly. The screen on the Prophet 12 blows the Ultranova away. Now you have this newer technology uh, than when the Ultranova came out. You have the OLED screen on the Prophet 12. You can see it from any angle. It's very crisp, very clear. It'll allow you to do things like see the actual oscillator waveform as you start to morph and change it, which is really nice. The Ultranova screen is probably its biggest drawback. It's just a simple LCD screen. There's no contrast control, and if you're not pretty much at the right angle, then you're not going to see the screen. You're not going to see the information that's on it and you're gonna hate life so that's kind of um, the biggest part about the uh, Ultranova that I don't like however the 
filter section on the Prophet 12 and the Ultra Nova are pretty different in how they're controlled. Now, the Ultra Nova has this great touched filter knob here, and I'm gonna go to a blank patch on both of these. So on the Prophet 12, you've got four dedicated knobs and two dedicated buttons for your filter section. Now, if I go to the low pass filter here for a second, I have, these are, these are pots, they're potentiometers here as opposed to encoders, whereas everything on the Ultra Nova is an encoder. Now, it's a, it's a plus and a minus here because the feel of the pots on the Prophet 12 are excellent. The, the knobs feel great, uh, very high quality build. Problem is, is that they're a low resolution uh, digital pot on here. You know, basically we have zero to 164. Now on the Ultra Nova, we have a high res encoder that if I press the filter button, this high res encoder will always be your filter. So if I go to filter here and I start sweeping this slowly down, you can actually feel it clicking just a little bit. It's, it's a smooth feel, but you can kind of feel it click just a little bit, um, even though there's no real detents in there. But you get this smooth action on it. And what that allows is it prevents this thing from having any stepping in the filter. So where on the Ultra Nova, you have no digital stepping in the filter when there's high resonance up and you sweep it. The Prophet 12, there's actually a lot of stepping. So let me just show you an example of this. Um, we'll take the Ultra Nova here, 24 dB filter, no distortion on it. I'm gonna raise the resonance all the way up. And what I'll do here is I'll sweep the filter now. Really the only stepping that I'm hearing there is from my thumb just being a little jittery on the knob. Now that's also kind of a drawback on the touched filter knob is that it's, it's so high definition that it takes a lot of turns to sweep it all the way. So, and it also depends on how fast you move it. Now on the Prophet 12, let's do that same, same situation. And if I put the resonance all the way up and I sweep it, So you could definitely hear the stepping in that. And it's funny because you actually can get a smoother action in your wrist turning these knobs as opposed to this touched filter knob. And it feels better in your hand, but the resolution is lower. So no matter what, you get that stepping sound, which, you know, some people say, oh, well, that's going to help you tune your resonance so that you can have it uh, key track. That would be cool if you had the option to turn it off which you don't, so that I'm just not buying that. Um, both filters in here sound really nice. Uh, let's go back to the Ultra Nova filter for a second here. And I'll turn the resonance down. Now a nice feature about the resonance and um, filter of the Ultra Nova is that we have lots of different characters of the filter. So we have all these different slopes and whatnot in here. We've got our low pass 24, uh, we've got our low pass 18, low pass 12, low pass six with no resonance. And alternatively, alternatively, you have the same for high pass on here. And then you have different bandpass resolutions as well. So you've got bandpass six by six, 
bandpass 12 by 12, bandpass 6 by 12, bandpass 12 by 6, bandpass 6 by 18, bandpass 18 by 6. So lots of different filter uh, pole selections on there. But in addition to that, you've got different types of filter distortion emulations in here. You've got diode distortion, valve distortion, clipper, crossover, rectify, bit down, rate down. So that will completely change how this filter reacts. You also have filter Q normalization, which will prevent you from having the resonance, you know, digitally clipping inside here, and it'll kind of keep your, your bass in check as well, which is nice. The Prophet 12 has the two filters here. You got your low pass and your high pass, and then the low pass you can select between a four pole or a two pole, you know, 24 dB or 12 dB slopes. So let's take a quick listen to how the different filter distortions on the Ultranova affect the waveforms. So this is just a simple saw tooth, and if I turn up the diode distortion, Let's change that now to valve. Clipper. Crossover. Rectify. bit down and rate down so as you can see that alone will greatly change how these filters react and sound so for instance let's go to uh, crossover, we'll turn that distortion up to about 78 and then sweep that filter with some resonance on it as well. So let's take it right about here and then I'll change through different distortion types. So as you can see it does greatly affect how these uh, filters will sound. The Prophet 12 has a kind of sort of similar thing going on, but it's before your low pass filter. You've got the character section, and really that's kind of part of the oscillators. So let's talk about the oscillator section between these two synthesizers. Now, the Prophet 12, it's got four oscillators that are Shark uh, DSP chip based oscillators. So they're pretty high quality. You've got the typical waveforms of square, sol, sine, triangle. And then you've got 12 digital shapes and three noise types. When you get into the digital shapes, you've got a left and right uh, shape that can be in addition to the main oscillator. And then you can kind of use the shape mod to blend between those uh, left and right oscillator types. So let's turn this up here and let's take a look at the sawtooth. Now the waveforms on the Prophet 12, they kind of have a character about them that's not necessarily super pure. And that isn't necessarily a bad thing, it's just something to be aware of when you're buying a synth. Now, let's take a look at these waveforms and you're going to notice something. Here's your sawtooth, here's your pulse, and here's your triangle. Now that doesn't look like any triangle I've ever seen in my life. Um, so how you can call it a triangle, I don't necessarily know. Apparently it's a triangle if you tap it directly off the board, but at the outputs, it never looks like a triangle. Now that may have something to do with how it runs through the character section or the low pass filter. I'm not exactly sure, but I can tell you that I've had, uh, I've scoped out a Pro 2, which supposedly is the same oscillator section, and when you pull up a triangle, it actually looks like a triangle in the output. So they definitely changed something about it after the Prophet 12. Let's take a look at the shape mod here. Now, if I adjust the shape mod, 
taking it to negative, we get kind of a shark fin. And then if we go positive, we get an inverted shark fin on it. Now you also have these uh, digital waveforms, such as this one here, which is called Tines. And when you have the dig digital waveforms up, you can morph between them. So I have, uh, let's do mellow is my left wave and ah is my right wave. Let's go to mellow. And then back to ah. So you get that interesting kind of wavetable effect by you know, morphing between the left and right sides. Really, it's more, it, it's kind of like vector synthesis, I would guess. Uh, now, on the Ultra Nova, we have a lot more waveforms to choose from. The Ultra Nova only has three oscillators, where the Prophet 12 has the four oscillators plus a sub oscillator. The Ultra Nova has three oscillators, but it also has two ring modulators, a noise generator. Uh, it's got those typical square, sine, triangle, saw, pulse, but then it also has nine saw pulse combinations. Then there's 20 digital waveforms and then 36 wavetables on top of that. The wavetables, you can um, scroll through the index of the wavetable, so you can get really interesting effects with that as well. Let's pull up the Ultra Nova here. And of course, here's our sawtooth. Oh, let me... Uh, turn my distortion back down. So here is that sawtooth. Now the waveforms on the Ultra Nova look a little bit more traditional. Uh, so sawtooth, triangle, looks like an actual triangle. Sine wave, looks like a sine wave. Then we get into these saw pulse width combinations here. Then you get pulse width and of course you can Take it all the way through. The pulse width modulation on the Ultra Nova is a little bit more extreme than on the Prophet 12, but the Prophet 12 will go all the way to zero on one side and then almost to zero on the other. And then we've got our square wave, and then we've got these digital waves here. And you'll notice that the digital waveforms, they do this kind of weird wiggle thing if you change them, but you're not really changing much there. It's not till you get to the actual wavetables let's get to a wavetable here wavetable one when you start scrolling through the wavetables that's when it gets interesting so you get a kind of similar sound to what the prophet 12 can do there wavetable two wavetable three so forth and so on. Uh, because these are digital oscillators in both of these synth synthesizers, you've got this option for a thing called slop on the Prophet 12. Now slop on the Prophet 12 is their own proprietary al algorithm to where it affects how the oscillators tune against each other and how they track. It's per oscillator on there. On the Ultra Nova, you have what's called drift, and drift on the Ultra Nova is global. So you can be a little bit more in detail with the oscillators as far as how they track on the Prophet 12, whereas on the Ultra Nova, it's a global thing. The Ultra Nova, though, has hard and soft sync, whereas the Prophet 12 only has a hard sync. You've got a um, virtual sync on the Ultra Nova, which allows you to do some cool stuff. I'll take a sine wave here. And let's go ahead and turn the virtual sync up. And it basically lets you multiply the harmonics inside of that signal, which is pretty nice. And it sounds really cool in different, different waveforms. Really cool. The Prophet 12, however, can do actual proper FM synthesis whereas the Ultra Nova cannot. You can do both linear and exponential FM on the Prophet 12. You can also do AM synthesis. Uh, so that's a pretty nice feature on the Prophet 12 that the Ultra Nova doesn't have. Now, 
let's just kind of jump through this thing a little bit. Uh, I'll say that both of these uh, units have excellent envelopes. Um, they're both very snappy. You can do drums great with them. You can do long evolving pads with them. You can have them loop. Uh, just really great envelopes all together. The, uh, the feedback section on the Prophet 12 is a cool tunable feedback, which is really nice. I like that a lot. Uh, then you have your delay section and you've got four tap delays. You can modulate everything on there. On the Ultra Nova, you've got five effects slots. Uh, so it works a little bit different here. You can set up two different delays. You can set up chorus, reverbs, uh, compressors, distortions, EQs. So you've got a lot of different things going on there and you can change the routing around on that as well. For more information on this stuff, Again, go to the written article over on fluxwithit.com because I get into a lot more detail about this kind of stuff. The modulation is a really major factor in both of these synthesizers. Uh, the modulation matrix on these two is pretty different. Now, you press the modulation button on the Ultra Nova, and you'll see you get three sources. You have two direct sources and then you have a touch source. So meaning you can use these touch encoders to trigger a modulation. Then you have your destination and then your depth and the depth can be positive or negative. Prophet 12 on the other hand has a modulation slot. You can press your assign mod source or assign mod destination and quickly assign things that way or you can use the menu system on here. The way that this thing works out is you have one source, your amount, and then one destination. But you have a decent amount of slots on there. Both of these things go really, really deep when it comes to modulation. The Prophet has eight fixed source modulation paths, and then it has 16 by two modulation matrix. The Ultra Nova, on the other hand, has three slots times 20, which equals about 60 different modulation routings versus the 24 slots on the Prophet 12. So it's a little bit different in the way they lay out, but bottom line is that both of these things are modulation monsters and you can do all kinds of fun stuff with them. How you access your actual patches on here, on the Profit, you have a bank select and program select. So you can bank through and then select your program on there. Whereas on the Ultra Nova, you have a patch browse and you can bank and patch browse like you do on the Profit 12, but you also have a category and genre that you can use to, to scroll through, which is really um, a quick way of getting through things. Another benefit of the Ultra Nova is the Ultra Nova has a vocoder, whereas the Prophet 12 does not. The Ultra Nova can also process audio through its filters and effects, whereas the Prophet 12 has no audio input on it at all. So that's kind of a letdown on the Prophet side because you would really want to run audio through that analog filter section and through the feedback and all that. Both of these can handle MIDI over DIN or over USB. Both of them can take uh, expression pedal inputs and sustain pedal inputs. Uh, so there's just a ton of beautiful things about both of these synthesizers. If you want to find out more of my thoughts on these two synthesizers, please check it out on my site. Anyway, check out the article. This is Flux of FluxWithIt.com. Peace.